couple of notes. Our methods of solving quadratics, there's three methods. Uh, factoring, completing the square, and the quadratic formula. Okay? And so I'm going to give you four problems, and we're going to work through these four problems, and we're going to solve each of the four problems in three ways. So you can see the methods side by side, um, and just get a little more familiar with the solving part. Okay? So our first problem that we're going to look at is 4x squared minus 9 equals 0. Okay. And we're going to solve this four different ways. We should be getting the same answer each time. Okay. Uh, so let's start by solving by factoring, which is what you guys have the most experience doing. We've, I've had you solve by factoring many, many, many times. Um, so what does this factor to? 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. And then set your factors equal to 0 and solve. And uh, we end up with 2x is negative 3, so x is negative 3 halves. For the first one, and x is positive three halves for the second one, and we have our answer. All right, so that's uh, what solving by factoring would look like. Now let's look at by completing the square. Now, on this particular problem, um, notice that the middle term is missing. And remember when we were talking about standard form and vertex form? Uh, this, so this is standard form and it's also vertex form. So there really isn't much work in, in terms of completing the square because we already have it in the form we want. Um, and so the, the rest would just be really to solve for x uh, by taking square roots. And so the method would look different because we'd first add 9 to both sides. You get 4x squared equals 9. Divide by 4. And then when you take the square root, don't forget the plus or minus sign. You take the square root of 9. You take the square root of 4. And you get x is equal to positive and negative 3 halves, which is the same exact thing we got when we solved by factor. But it's a different way, right? Different method. Um, and so part of this is just getting familiar with the different methods out there. And sometimes certain problems, one method will be a lot easier to choose. Um, and in, the, in another problem, another method will be easier to choose. And just getting familiar with this is going to be helpful to you. And then we have the most recent thing that we've studied, the quadratic formula. And again, we should get the same answer. So practice that memorizing. You guys have it in your head now, huh? Negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And what's a, b, and c in this problem? a is 4, b is 0 because there's no middle term, and c is negative 9. So we're going to plug stuff in, and we get negative. 0 plus or minus the square root of 0 squared minus 4 times 4 times negative 9 all over 2 times 4. Go ahead and simplify that and see if you get plus or minus 3 halves.
working out for you? Here's, here's what my work looks like. I noticed that four times four is 16. I noticed you have a negative times a negative, so it's gonna be positive. So 16 times nine and the square root of 16 is four, square root of nine is three. Reduce that. So um, for this particular problem, which method would be the easiest method for you to use? Completing the square, factoring, Anybody, you like the quadrat? See, it just depends what you like. So, okay. Um, let's try another one. So each problem is going to be a little different. And so you may like a different method as we go through these. So the next one is going to be 2x squared plus 4x is equal to 0. So let's start with the factoring again. You guys remember how to factor this? This is the easy kind of factoring. This is where you just notice both terms have a 2x, and you factor out the 2x, and you're left with an x plus 2. And then we have two terms. We get 2x times x plus 2. So you take 2x, set that equal to 0. And x plus 2, set that equal to 0. And you get x is 0. And x is negative 2. And those are your two answers. So this one can go really quick with factoring. Completing the square. So we have 2x squared plus 4x is equal to 0. There's a few ways to teach this. I'm going to teach it in a, just try to keep it consistent with how you've completed the square with um, equations. Because uh, before we used completing the square, the purpose was to get from standard form to vertex form. Now it's kind of a little different purpose. And so there are other options out there to show this, but I'm just going to try to keep it consistent to what you guys have been doing. Um, so our first step was if, you know, if, a, if the number out in front's not a 1, you've got to factor that out, right? So you got 2 times x squared plus 2x. And I'll leave a little space here and here, and still going to equal zero. And then we complete the square. We, we have to decide, well, what number do we add in here to make this a perfect square? Right? And uh, so, like, if we had x squared plus 2x, we're going to want that to become x plus 1 squared because half of 2 is 1, and so then we square the 1. 1 times 1 is what goes here, which is going to be 1, so we want to add a 1. But if we add 1, then we're going to want to subtract what? 2. Because by putting the 1 inside the parentheses, it's really got a, a double value. It's 2 times 1, so i got to counterbalance that with the minus 2. All right, and so that should seem a little familiar to you. Uh, the next step is I'm going to, going to um, square or change this into a perfect square. So x plus 1 squared. And then solve like we did finding x-intercepts. So we add 2 to both sides. We divide by 2. Take the square root. Don't forget the plus or minus. What's the square root of 1? Square root of 1 is 1. Just 1. 
So we get x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus positive 1. So you split that up. We got negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. And you have negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. And we're getting the same two answers, 0 and negative 2. You can see completing the square in this one was a little bit more work than factoring. And then we have quadratic formula. What's A? B? And C? Okay, so plug that into the quadratic formula. See if you can get 0 and negative 2. Did it work? Did my work? We should get zero and negative two again. So on this one, for this equation, which method did you feel like it was easiest for you. Factoring. Factoring. That's, I mean, if I were to have this problem, factoring would be the one I'd go to quick, because it's just going to be quick. It's gonna get, you're going to get to it right away. Um, problem is not everything factors, right? I'm giving you problems that will factor. But most, most things out there won't factor. And so then factoring won't work for you at all, and you'll have to complete the square root of quadratic formula. OK, number three. I have four problems for us. We're halfway there. x squared is equal to 3x plus 10. And I want us to solve for x to figure out well, what's what's x, what's going to make this work. And um, for factoring, we, we've we've done solving by factoring before. And what it, what did I tell you uh, is maybe like the first thing you have to make sure is true before you start the factoring process. Got to be equal to zero. And here it's not. Um, same with quadratic formula, has to be equal to zero. Uh, completing the square, you have some, some wiggle room. You, there's different ways to do that, so you don't have to have that. But, but definitely for factoring and definitely for quadratic formula, you have to have this thing equal to zero. So I'm going to start with that. So x squared minus 3x minus 10 is equal to zero. And then go ahead and Solve by factoring.
What answers are we getting? Negative two and five, something like that, right? All right, then completing the square. So here we have an x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. And we need to complete the square. Uh, there's only a 1 in front of x squared, so we don't have to worry about that part. But that minus 3, like if I had x squared minus 3x, what would the perfect square end up being? x plus what? Or x minus what? Minus 3 over 2 squared, huh? And so what should we add to it to complete that square? You square it. What's 3 over 2 times 3 over 2? 9 over 4. So that is what we're going to have to add. So we got x squared minus 3x. We still have the minus 10. I'm just going to scoot that over a little bit. And the thing we're going to add in is 9 over 4. But if I add that in, I'm going to have to subtract it back out, keep it balanced. And I put it there so that the first three terms would, um, would factor to a perfect square, which is x minus 3 over 2 squared. Ten over one is the same thing as forty over four. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by four, and to get a common denominator, and I get a minus forty-nine over four equals zero. Add the fraction to both sides. Take the square root of both sides. Plus or minus when you take that square root, square root of 49, which will be 7, and square root of 4, which will be 2. You end up with x is equal to 3 halves, plus or minus 7 halves. And you can split it into two different problems, 3 halves plus 7 halves, which is 10 over 2, which is 5, and 3 halves minus 7 halves, which is negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2, and we still get the same two answers. This one's a lot more complicated because it's got fractions involved, but remember, not everything's going to factor, and so you you have to be good at completing the square, and that's why we're practicing it, because it's not only going to help with this, it helps getting into vertex form, or uh, quadratic formula wouldn't help you with that. Um, it also helps with, with other things that you'll see when you get to math three, or math three honors. Okay. And... Quadratic formula should give us the same answers. Go ahead and use quadratic formula and see if you get that.
Is it working for you? Five and negative two? So the nice thing about doing these side by side is you know what you're trying to get. So you know if you've gone off track, if you're not getting that. Um, so it gives you a direct feedback. All three of these should be the same. All right, I'm going to give you one last one. And this one, I'm going to say, hey, do what you can without my help. See if you can factor, see if you can complete the square, see if you can do quadratic formula. See what you can do. All right, so here's the last one. Three X squared minus two is equal to five X. Solve for X. Three different ways.
What are the two answers you guys are getting? Two and negative one third. Completing the, completing the square should be hard on this one. Okay. Um, and you're going to feel it when you're doing that. I will show you, I've done factoring and completing the square. I will put that up here. If you're working there, you don't have to look at it. I'm just going to show you the work right now. So take a look at either, and just if you have questions about it, please ask. Again, the goal is to be good at all three methods. You're going to naturally be stronger in one method, but you want to get strong in the other ones. Yeah. Oh, oops. Yes, it did. 12 divided by 6 should be 2, not 3. Do all that hard work and mess up at the end, huh? Yeah. <sighs> Fixed it. I know you guys are looking, thinking, if you have questions, ask. If, you, if you're good with these, you, you know you're going to do the third method, the quadratic formula as well. Uh, but just wanted to pause here to make sure we're okay. Questions if we have any. Questions on that in the steps? And then the uh, quadratic formula should get the same thing. Here's my work. And you, in this one, quadratic formula is considerably easier than completing the square. Um, but if you go back to the first one, Completing the square was a lot easier than quadratic formula. So it just depends on the problem you're given. <laughs> 